Hey guys, and uh, welcome to another Geek Reviews. Today is going to be uh, the first part of the High Fleet Leviathan new uh, Shield of Battle campaign uh, expansion for the Tyranids and for the other parts in it. Uh, basically, I left it up the chance on which order I was going to do everything. Um, it's going to be a four-part mini-series, so each section is going to have its own part, and I left it up to uh, left it up to the dice to actually determine which parts that I was going to do first. And today's part is going to be the um, the Death from the Skies expansion slash update for the rules on there. And we'll go through each or all, all the rules in it and go through each of the factions and what their tables are and what you get from their tables. Um the next step the next section will be well part two will be the Echoes of War missions. And after that there'll be part three for the City Fight missions. As well as part four will be finally the Tyranids attachment, their new warlord trip table, all the other little gribbles that they get and all the formations in there. So yeah, hope you enjoy the series. It's gonna be coming out every two days, so this could be day one, part one. Yeah. Right, so enjoy. So Death from the Skies. Death from the Skies uh, basically has one thing for your flyers. It's all for your flyers to give them an extra boost, an extra ability, special rule kind of thing. Um, basically, Death from, the, uh, Death from the Skies only takes effect if for one of three reasons. You have Fighter Races. Uh, fighter Races is a special rule that applies to certain missions where you get to choose one flying monstrous creature or flyer, uh, well, one unit, one model with the flyer type or the flying monstrous creature type in its um, in its for its like unit type, and with this, and if this mission, if any of the missions have the fighter race special rule, then you get to receive one of the fighter race bonuses by rolling on the table. If not, you can still use the fighter race special rule. Sorry, I'm looking down. I'm also trying to read and make sure I'm going to get everything right. Um, you can also get the fighter race special rule in a mission that doesn't have the fighter race special rule by paying a 35 point upgrade to one of your units to do it. Um, by the way it's worded, it says you can upgrade any model in with the fighter race special rule. Basically, by the way it's stated here, is if you wish you can upgrade any model uh, to fighter race in a mission. And basically it follows the exact same uh, as it would in normal fighter race missions, but it's a 35 point upgrade. I, it doesn't say there's a limitation on how many fighter races you can have, but because of the fighter race special rule above it states that you can upgrade one, I'd assume that it only means you can upgrade one per, one person to have the fighter race special rule, because you can't just bring in a load of flyers that say everything has fighter race, because why would you send all your fighter races into the same battle? Makes a little bit more fluff sense. Um, the other condition where you can have fighter races is if you're doing a campaign mission, like if you're doing a long campaign, say playing through um, the Leviathan, old Leviathan missions, or the or the Red Warg missions, or basically any of any campaign style mission you just want to play through with your friends, and um, basically keep a track of your flyers and your flying monstrous creatures, and if those units destroy five or more flyers or flying monstrous creatures themselves. Um, they get the fighter race special rule. Uh, basically, let's see. Yeah, basically, the model that has that you're, like, you're tallying up cannot die as well. So if you get to, like four four kills and then you get killed, then you don't get your fighter race special rule. The next your next mission after your next kill, because you died and you you now basically now a rookie pilot and you're now coming into it. You know, coming into the fray again, so yeah. But it's kind of a good little bonus if you're playing for a little. If you want to bring this into your campaign, uh, it's basically you're right. I want to have this, say, I want to have this vendetta flying around, getting loads of fighter kills, and then oh, it's got five. Now it's a fighter race, and you get, you get to roll on the table. All right. So that's the thingies of the actual special rules for. It and here are the tables. I'm going to go through them one at a time. There is, let's see, 8, 12, there's 14 tables in total, so it's going to be a thing. I'm going to put them up on screen, so I'm going to move a little bit more to the left so that I can uh, make sure I have a rough room. So I'm going to go through them in order. So the Astra Militarum slash Militarum Tempestus, basically Imperial Guard, here are your rules. Basically, uh, you fight a race if you roll a 1 or a 2 because it's a D3. Um, 
So one or a two, your fighter risk when it arrives from reserves can arrive from any table edge. So you can basically make it come on from your opponent's table edge and just go, hi, I'm in your rear arcs for everything, and just go surprise. Uh, defensive fighter, plus one to your front armor. Plus one to your front armor on a Vendetta, a Valkyrie, or a Vulture gunship means it's armor 13 on the front. Most AA units only have strength 7 guns. So they're going to be going, okay, now I've hit you, now I have to roll 6s to even glance you. There are going to be a few exceptions, of course, if something happens to have Skyfire for whatever, whatever reason, like a um, Mysterious Objective, or, um, or an Icarus Lars Cannon. There you go. They get a bit of punch for your armor, but you're still armor 13, so it's going to be quite hard. And then the last one, uh, Inspirational Presence. All units within the 12 inches of the fight race have the um, have the Fearless Special Rule. So for Imperial Guard, that's actually quite handy if you're playing an infantry army. This thing comes in, supports them. Oh look, we're now no longer scared that we're getting shot to pieces. So I think that's pretty cool. So, yeah. Uh, right. Demons. Demons time. So... Guided by the god, the fighter race must re-roll a uh, failed to wound and armor penetration rolls when it's doing vector strike. Nah. If you're doing it with a demon prince, I can see the logic with that, because if they're going to be up in the air, like, spouting off um, whatever, like all the psychic powers and stuff like that, or if it's a lord of change or something along those lines, it's flying across doing a vector strike. That's pretty cool. I uh, guess to re-roll the wounds and to fail armor penetration, so a little bit of an extra incentive because most demon princes aren't going to be shooting. Uh, unholy fortune plus one to the wounds, so you can have a demon prince with five wounds. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. You got blessing of the dark, or the blessing of the gods. Fighter race has an invulnerable save of uh, is invulnerable save improved by plus one. This is cumulative with every other thing. So grimoire of true names. Gives you plus two, I believe, and cursed earth and this. That's plus forty or invul save. So you have a five plus. So technically you have a one plus invulnerable save, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, even if you get, if you happen to get unfortunate to be, um, when you're doing the walk storm table and you lose one from, I can't remember what the thing is, but you lose. I know you can't lose one from invulnerable save, or if you get banishment from a grey knights player, it's going. I don't care. So that's pretty cool. Okay, Blood Angels next. Um, you can see a pattern with a lot of them. The a lot of them are just plus one ballistic skill. But yeah, uh, Angel of Vengeance plus one ballistic skill. So it's normal, uh, as does what it says on the tin. You have Grace of the Angels, which is you get to do a hundred and eighty degree turn before you move. So you have so if you're in front of someone and they're right on your tail, you can just turn around. I don't know why I'm doing that, because you can't see my hand up here. So if you, you can just go, right, turn around, point blank range. Hey. <laughs> hey, you, you thought you were going to hurt me? Hi, I'm now in front of you. Um, Wrath of Sanguinius is a once-use-only thing. At the start of one of your turns, you must declare that you're using this rule. The fighter race and all friendly models within 12 inches of it have this um, have the preferred enemy special rule. Uh, this is only part of the same faction. So everything gets preferred enemy, which is awesome. It doesn't say that it's just for shooting. This is for assaults as well, for any um, for any psychic powers. So basically you have three phases where everything within 12 inches of this fighter has preferred enemy. So if you if you time it right, you can have your fighter right in the middle of your army and everything gets preferred enemy for a single turn. It's awesome. So I quite like that one. Uh, Chaos Space Marines. Basically, again, plus one ballistic skill on the first one. Uh, uh, Terror of the Skies Fighter Race rerolls your uh, vector strikes and vector strike uh, wounds into armor penetrations. So that's mainly for a Helldrake. I know the um, I know the Chaos have access to other things like Hell Talons and other stuff like that, or Plague Drones. But yeah, you're probably going to be bringing a Helldrake, so that's pretty cool. And Lord of Chaos, all. Oh, Twelve uh, all friendly units within twelve inches of the fighter race have the relentless special rule. I'm not too much of a fan of that, but that could be good if you try to have like a support flyer in, and you're trying to do you want to move your havocs up, and you need to get you need to get some havocs moved up, and they just happen to then end up within twelve inches of your of your flyer. 
then they gain the relentless special rule. So, hi, surprise, we've moved, but we can still fire. So, not too, not great, but pretty good for it. Plus, the uh, with the arcane targeting system, a a Heldrake with a Hades Auto Cannon becomes plus a skill 4 again, which, because of the demon special rule, will normally be only 3. So, there you go. Plus a skill 4, which is pretty cool. So next we have the Dark Angels. Oh, let me make this a little bit smaller. There we go. Um, basically, again, plus one ballistic skill for uh, Hunters of Heretics. The Expert Redeployment. Uh, basically, the fighter allows it to come on from any any table edge when arriving from ongoing reserves. So this basically means it can fly off. It can fly off the table edge and then appear back on the same table edge or go off one table edge and come off the opposite side. You can do a bit of shenanigans that way. And then homing beacon or friendly units with the same faction of the fighter race. When deep striking within 12 inches of the fighter race, do not scatter. So if you're doing a um, if you're doing a dark a what they're called the Terminator ones. I can't remember what they're called. Def Deathwing, that's it. If you're doing a Deathwing Assault, you're arriving on turn 2 and your fighter happens to arrive before them. Surprise, it flies on, everything deep strikes in around that fighter. That's pretty cool, because technically your, fighter, cause your reserves come on at the same time as your deep strikes, so that would come on and its homing beacon would act, be activated at the same time. And then any other ones that would be coming in from deep strike later would, would also be quite cool to have that. So that's that done. Uh, now, Grey Knights. This one's still a bit too big. Shrink it down so it's not covering my face. <laughs> ah, there we go. Okay, again, uh, one and two is plus one ballistic skill from the third eye. The second one is mental challenge, which improves your cover saves by one up to a maximum of three plus. So if you need the jink for whatever reason, you have a three plus cover save. Which, if anyone's been rolling three plus saves, you know, you know, you got a good chance of surviving it. And then your psych and then psychic pilot. Basically you get another psyker on the field, because I know most Grey Knight vehicles lost their psychic pilot and their ability to do psychic powers. So you get to bring in another psyker with master which is mastery level one, which generates powers from psychic uh, from Santic demonology. So technically you can have this thing that's flying around and it could have Vortex of Doom, Banishment well it automatically have banishment, um Sanctuary. So it gets a 6 up from Vulnerable save. Um, yeah, Purifying Flame, which would be hilarious. It's like fly on. Purifying Flame from me. That's pretty cool. Right. Dark Elder and Elder have to share a table. So, uh, this one's still a bit too big. There we go. I thought I had this all set up beforehand, so I'm just going to move a little bit further across here. Again, you have plus one ballistic skill. To a Dark Elder, uh, to an Eldar, a uh, Crimson Hunter, uh, XR, it makes him ballistic skill 6. So, if you, I think a ballistic skill six. If you mi miss on a one, you get a snapshot to uh, try and re-roll it. Still pretty cool, but for the dark Eldar or other or the other Eldar fighter, if you don't want, if you don't have the upgrade points, which granted, I think uh, X Arc's only like a twenty point upgrade, which this is a thirty five point upgrade. So, not that not that great for a, maybe an X Arc, but for a the their psychic one or the Dark Eldar especially, getting plus one ballistic skill, hitting on twos, it's awesome. Um, and then being able to do the Dust Dancer as well, being able to do, basically, that allows them to be really cheesy because I know they have Vector Dancer. I f well, no, the Dark Eldar don't, but the Eldar do. So you have to do a 180 degree turn, fly, then do another 90 degree turn. So you can be really cheesy with your manoeuvres. Um, and then as well, Symbol of Cain, all friendly units uh, within 12 inches of the uh, fighter race, I have the Hatred Special Rule. So Banshees or... Um, I don't know, Homunculi or... I, I, don't, I don't know the Dark Eldar and Eldar that well. But basically, any, which is pretty, but it'd be pretty cool for having a supporting assault unit that's so just gone into assault, gives them rerolls to hit on the first round of combat. That's pretty cool. So, here we go. Necrons. This is a one that I really like, and I wish I had a Necron army, because you'd um, 
you'd have a lot of fun with this. First one, plus one ballistic skill, so it makes it takes the ballistic skill five, I believe, because I think they're ballistic skill four to begin with. So I hit it on twos. Uh, then the other two is where it gets really funny. Symbiotic repair basically gives it it will not die. Still, uh, it's one in three chance of you getting a whole point back on a flyer, which I always think is great if you can get your ho your whole points back. Yes, it's one in three chance, but still pretty cool. Resurrection Vessel is where I think it's slightly overpowered, or slightly overpowered, but also pretty cool if you're a Necron player. So, yeah. But let me read it out. All friendly units within uh, 12 inches of the fight radius get plus one to their reanimation protocols, which is cumulative with any other modifiers, but cannot be improved beyond four plus. That that last bit of the sentence, I don't understand. I That may be a typo, that may be three plus, or something, but because there's nothing that ever negates it, unless this is a hint from, uh, from for the new codex where maybe they've lowered the um, the reanimation protocols to a six plus generically, and then a resolve brings it to a five plus. Uh, but with this, we'll take it to a four plus. I'm not 100% sure. But this also means any units that don't have a lord in there with a resolve also get a four plus reanimation. So you can have that can be pretty. That can be pretty powerful and game changing, because you bring your thing, you bring your doom size or your night size on, because it could be applied to either of them, um, or the the shroud bomber from Forge World. It'll also be able to apply, um, be able to apply to. If you got this on its roll, um, it's pretty powerful because you can bring this on, and then you've got a nice, nice twelve inch bubble around it, where everything gets up on a four plus. Uh, that's that's pretty powerful, and I I really like that. I'm very now tempted to start a Necronomy just because of this. <laughs> right, turn the page and orcs. Time for some orcses. Right, orcs ones are pretty cool. Um, you got fighter boss plus one ballistic skill, which takes it to ballistic skill three. So it's hitting things on fours. I think it has an upgrade as well, where you can give it plus one ballistic skill against flyers or ground targets, I can't remember which one. It may be an old codex, it may be this codex, but could potentially get it up to four uh, ballistic skill four, with its guns being twin linked. So it'll be hitting on threes, I think. I'm not 100% sure, don't quote me on that, I don't play orcs. But that's pretty cool. Um, plus one to your front armour, which is good for an orc, because most of their armours are pretty low. I think a a Daka jet is only front armor 11, so taking it up to front armor 12 makes it a lot more survivable. Um, and then Icon of Gork, all units within 12 inches of it have um, the, with, the with the same faction as the Fire Race have feel no pain 6 plus. You can't complain for a free feel no pain, um, especially if you don't have any docks in your army, or, or, or not docks or pain boys. Great way to get an extra little save. Yeah, it's 6 plus, but you're always going to get that unless you're getting hit by strength 8, because most orcs are toughness 4. So that's pretty cool, getting a 6 plus, um, getting a 6 plus additional save, because most of the time you're not going to be getting a save from your 6 plus armor, because most things go through it, unlike, except for last guns. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, right, now jumping on to the space puppies. Space puppies get the normal uh, plus 1 plus skill, which for the. Um, What's it called? The flying brick. I don't think it's really needed because it's called cool four anyway, and it's gonna be firing blast templates. Just means its blast templates are gonna be slightly more on target. Um, I think the other ones are slightly better for it. The monster hunter, especially for the one with the frost cannon, be able to reroll to wound to make sure you get a wound on there to make sure it has to do a toughness test or die. It's pretty cool, as well as blessing of the uh, blessing of the iron wolf, getting it will not die. As I said before, with the Necron ones, getting it will not die on a flyer just means it's just going to be that much harder to kill and that much hard and that much more of a nuisance, especially because the flying bricks are, I think, armor twelve all around. Because I think it's a storm talon chassis, uh, but with extra armor. So either I, I quite like that table. I, as I say, I quite like in most of the tables. I think majority of them are pretty cool. Chaos Space Marines, I think, have got a bit chipped on there so far, but all right, let's keep going. Space Marines, auto-targeting system, there you go, again, plus one ballistic skill. 
the retro thrusters that allows it to do its 180 degree turn before it does a um, before it moves. Always good to maybe get out of line of sight of something or to get into a good firing arc or anything basically. Um, then yeah, then the next one is Wrath of the Emperor. Another once use only one, uh, which is kind of typical of Space Marines, especially like with a lot of their doctrines. If you're playing Ultramarines, they're all once use only. So this is an additional thing. Uh, this is the same as which one was it? The Blood Angels one, Wrath of Sanguinius. Basically, all enemy, uh, all friendly units gain uh, for enemy for a turn for the entire turn. They use it as a sh uh, psychic shooting and assault phase. So if you do it quite, if you do it well. You can do. You can be. This can be quite devastating. I think. Um, yeah. Uh, Tau time. Tau time plus one ballistic skill, which is quite good for a lot of their flyers. Don't have that good of ballistic skill. I think they're all ballistic skill free. This makes it all. They're all hitting on fours. This is including stuff like the Barracuda, the Remora drone fighters, and the uh, Sunshock bomber, and the other one, the Tiger Shark. Oh yeah, the Tiger Shark, I think, could be able to get this as well. This would be hilarious on a Tiger Shark. Um, but yeah, plus one, uh, stealth shielding, plus one cover save. to It's cover save up to a maximum of three. So if you put this on a a Barracuda, which has the disruption pods, it automatically has a four plus cover save, so it never has the jink. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, no wait, yeah, no four. No, six, oh, five plus cover save, sorry. Um, but if it jinx, it goes to a three plus cover save. I think maybe two plus cover save, because I don't know how it's going to work, because the stealth shielding would negate the fact that it would go to a two plus, so it would always only be a three plus. But if you have intervening models, you then get all building cover. Pretty cool. Marker plane, I think, is the is pretty good for a Sunshark bomber. Because its main armament is its bombing run, and it does that in the movement phase, and then it has, I think the only other weapons it has is a missile pod. So you either get, um, I think it's heavy four, four missiles that hit on fours, you get half of them, wounding most things, or you're going to be going against vehicles probably, so you could be trying to glance stuff. Uh, adding D3 marker lights to a unit instead of firing. If you can, which is pretty cool, basically, because you're going to be flying over something anyway and bombing it, you may as well be marking it as well for your other forces. So it means the other marker light units can go on to something else. Then it's kind of so you can be a bit more um, resourceful with your own army, uh, resource efficient. That's it. So I think that's pretty. I think that one's pretty cool. I'm not 100% sure on the uh, stealth shielding or the target, the targeting re targeting array, and the marker plane one. All good. Stealth shielding, I don't think it's that good, but tar have enough cheese anyway, they don't need to be more po more powerful. Okay, pistol resistance of the whole thing, of I'm saving the Tyranids for the last, well, they are also on the last page of it, so makes sense. Tyranids, Lone Hunter. Um, so let's go through this. So you've got Lone Hunter at the top, basically the automatically pass their instinctual behavior tests, which on a, f on a flying monstrous creature is pretty good, but most of their leaderships are. 10 anyway, so it doesn't matter. So it's mainly for a high flying hive tyrant, it gets plus 3 inches to its synapse range, takes it to a 15 inch synapse. So that'll be um, quite useful for if you're wanting to have your, uh, your high, high flying hive tyrant going in, you can make sure you've always always got a slightly bigger synapse range. Plus with Dominion on top of that, you can have a 20, 21 inch synapse range from a single creature. Just from that alone, I think the best ones are the two below it. Adaptive Biology basically gives it plus one wound to its wound characteristics. So Flying Hive Tyrant with five wounds. So it's going to be a lot harder to kill. A Harpy or a Crone, for example, go up to six wounds. Because I think they're... Yeah, I think they're five wounds apiece. I, 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 have, a, I have a Crone. I rarely use it because most people I, don't, I know don't have flyers, so I don't generally bring one. I generally only bring my Flying Hive Tyrant. But still, a uh, plus one to wound characteristics. You can also give this to a Haridan. So those are used with Haridans out there. I think that takes it from ten, nine wounds to ten wounds. So it makes this thing even harder to kill. The best one, though, the um, I think is Sudden Escape. The fighter ace, as long as it's within 12 inches of the 
of the table edge can enter ongoing reserves at the start of your enemy shooting phase before any shooting attacks are carried out. That is awesome. Basically, means you're going to be bringing your bringing your flyers in on your hot fire monster creatures on and, and on, along the table edge. They're going to be doing their shooting and then legging it. It also doesn't state that it has to be in swooping mode to do this. So you're going to have a flying hive tyrant in glide mode, jumping up the table, and if you know it's going to be shot at a lot this turn, you can go right. If you can see them, he's redeployed a lot of his forces to be just to fire at him and like the final half tower is the only target on that side of the table you can be a bit cheeky and go right fight a race flying off the table because it doesn't say it has to be in swooping mode to use this ability so you can do it in glide mode because it's still a flying monstrous creature at that point uh, which I think is awesome um, right there is one more table for other factions in the game. There aren't other many other factions in the game that can't get access to flyers or have their own tables within this. Uh, I'm mainly talking about like stuff from Forge World, like the Forge World um, army lists, like Death Corps of Krieg, um, the D99 uh, Elysian Drop, the Armored Battalion from uh, Imperial Armor 1, the Renegades from Imperial Armor 13, stuff like that. Uh, same with Sisters of Battle, uh, Inquisition Forces, and basically anything that can have access to a flyer that isn't the main armies, they use this table. Um, I think it's an okay table to have. Uh, let me bring it up. Basic crack shot, plus one ballistic skill. Um, most flyers that aren't part of armies generally only have a ballistic skill of three. So making a ballistic skill of four, good. Evasive maneuvers plus one to the cover saves. Do maximum of three, so if it needs to jink, there you go, you got um, a three plus cover save. And if it's got any invading models anyway, it gets a four plus cover save, or behind a building, a three plus cover save somehow. Um, and then inspirational aircraft, it's also a very good one, gives everything within 12 inches fearless. Um, so for a lot of those army lists that don't have, like, don't have to roll on the tables, a lot of them. I know, especially Renegade, the new Renegade uh, army list from Imperial Armor 13 has uh, a lot of their leaderships are really low, or it's like uh, D6 plus 4 for their leadership. Um, so that would be pretty good for them. But yeah, right. That's all the tables gone through, and my throat is now a bit sore because I've been talking for half an hour at the camera. Uh, but yeah, that's the first part of the the rules from Shield of Baal Leviathan. Um, I will be doing on Thursday the next one. Oh my God. No, there's some paint. I look like I've got some paint on it. It's like what? Um, I'll be on Thursday. I'll be going through the Echoes of War missions. There's, um, I believe, there's six missions to go through in there. Yeah, there's six missions to go through in there. I'll be going through those in detail, like telling you the deployments, their particular special rules, and thinking that's going to be a bit more scripted. I'm going to actually have a script in front of me on how to do it, because there is a lot in them. Uh, then on Saturday, I'll be doing a, a, I'll be doing the new city fight rules, and that's going to take me a while to go through, so expect another long one. And then on Monday, I believe Monday, uh, I think I'm going to be still here on Monday. If not, it will be when I come back, the Tyranid Forces Detachment. Or I may have it all pre-recorded and set to go up anyway on Monday. Uh, but yeah, there is that's the plan for this mini-series. I hope you enjoyed my ramblings. Uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more, because there will be more. Um, there will be the White Dwarf Weekly on Saturday as well. I'll probably do that in the evening. I'll probably set the... Uh, see if I want to go in the morning, I'll probably record it on Friday. Um, there'll be a new unboxing as well, probably next week of the Zone Throat Kit, because I'll get that next week, because I'll be paid tomorrow, so I may get it tomorrow, may get it on, uh, may get it next week, because there's also the new Shield of Baal campaign set that's possibly going to be coming out this Friday, which I'm hopefully going to get myself a copy on, which I'll be doing an unboxing of as well. When that comes through, that will be the following week. Um, yeah, but that's all I can think of. That's going to be coming. That's going to be starting anytime soon. I'll also probably be starting my new A Geek Play series. I'll be probably starting Aliens Isolation or Morheim, uh, City of the Damned, because that just came out. And I'll be doing a Geek 
plays with that, uh, just some random skirmish battles or online battles. Uh, that'll be fun to have a bit of a go on there, because it's in alpha stage, so it'll be good to show the progression of the game as it goes through. Uh, but all in all, yeah. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. Comment if you think I've got anything wrong or you want to know any more specifics. Um, comment on if I need if you want me to review anything else that you can think of that needs reviewing. Any new anything that comes out, just point me towards it if I like it. I like the idea. I'll get round to reviewing it at some point. Uh, but yeah, like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed, and yeah, see you next time.